Good Tuesday morning, guys, or Wednesday nice morning, Wednesday. guys. It's a short week. You've got uh, to look welcome to the program this. on a four-day week here on the I Love Seville Network. My name is Jerry Miller. It's good to be with you. Today's a special day for the cast of characters you've come to love on the uh, I Love Seville Network and on Real Talk with Keith Smith, because one of those cast of characters has their birthday today, and he's the jack of all wit, Judah Wickhauer. Um, who we will celebrate. Before we do, let's welcome the distinguished gentleman to the program, fresh from a three-day weekend. Today's Wednesday. I'm about to say, don't con- <laughs> um, Nice job, Miller. I'm thank like, oh, you. Thank you. Thanks, Tuesday. Hold it. <laughs> Interestingly, today's show, the second word I messed up, um, the day. But how was your 4th of July? Did you have a good weekend? We had a great weekend. And uh, for those who watched the show on Friday, um, Yona joined us, and we, we, our tradition is to go to Monticello to see the naturalization. And as we were talking on, on Friday, um, you know, uh, if you need a little boost in the arm of, uh, you know, about this country and, and, and how you feel about it, um, go there. They were really um, hard, uh, it, just, it just brought tears to my eyes because, um, there's a portion of it, like we talked about on Friday, that the judge, because this is a, a, a proceeding, the judge invites the newly minted U.S. citizens to tell their story. And there was a young lady there from Ukraine. Wow. And this, just to say there wasn't a dry eye in the house would be an understatement. Uh, just She got up and just was just passionate. And uh, I think the largest contingent of of uh, new citizens came from Afghanistan and they got up and talked about, you know, their experiences. And it just was, that is like the hallmark of the event. I mean, the naturalization is the hallmark of it, but to sit there and listen to these folks talk and tell their stories and uh, it gives you a bit of a shock in the arm and uh, makes you feel good to be an American. Well said. Um, Fourth of July behind us. We're now in the second half of 2022. The later stages of the Can year. Can you believe that? I know the year's flying. Um, well, we certainly wished from um, a, a market standpoint that the first half flew by. It was the f- worst first half of the year since 1970, 52 years. You're talking about the stock market. We're talking the financial markets. But, you know, f- we'll pause on that note for a moment and let's. Let's wish a happy birthday to Yeah, our, yeah. So, so um, I brought in some little cupcakes with sparklers on it. And uh, since I'm the executive producer of the show, we're going to sing <laughs> our dear friend, Judah Wickow, a happy birthday. So I don't know if you got all the cameras set a up. Light. You light. Well, you light first since you're the birthday boy. And set up the cameras. And uh, so this is the first for us with sparklers. So either this is going to go really, really well or the... Well, the Charlottesville's finest is going to come visit. Do you have, um, you're going to have to toss that spark over to us so we can light this as well? I think he's got to toss the thing. How many do you have over there, this my is, friend? I you gave four. four. Wow. Uh, four. I, don't know, I don't know if I over, <laughs> over For the big four <laughs> for Judah Wickhauer. He's literally lighting sparklers on here. The interesting thing about a cupcake like this is if you don't do it quickly, it's just going to melt all over the icing. Um, so right. Judah, here we go. Man is uh, you, fantastic. Look, we got sparklers going. I caught here. that with my left hand, by the way. This is um, completely covered in the umbrella policy that the I Love Seville <laughs> Network has. Lighting um, sparklers on, on, on live shows. Um, there's no evidence at all in case the Up place burns behind. down. Yes, we're go. doing it on camera. Judah Wickhauer is, um, it's his birthday. We won't embarrass him from an age standpoint. But well, the if man you look is, at his Facebook page, it'll he, tell you. He's <laughs> aging like a fine wine. I tell people I'm older than I look and younger than I feel. And that's why they call Judah, you the young cowers. Judah, thank you for all you do. And you ready, sir? Yeah. On a count of three. One. We're going to sing happy birthday. We're going to sing happy the birthday. The whole thing. Is that what the viewers and listeners want? Oh. The, oh. We, we, we can just say happy birthday, <laughs> Judah. I don't know if they want I to wanted to sing me, Happy me. Judah to Happy Birthday, but that's okay. We you nor sing. I sing, um, <laughs> unless Judah wants us to sing. No, I'm okay. I think you're okay. So we should, J- Jamie Turner says, a true legend, Happy Birthday, Judah Wickhauer. Thank you. Judah, cheers. Happy birthday to you, my friend. Thank we you. love you, Judah. Couldn't cheers. do this without you. Um, ten years. So you got to blow out your together. candles first there, because right, otherwise try. it's bad yeah. luck. And you're, we blow you're, you're about to catch the studio on fire. Um, I'm blowing mine out now. There we go. There we go. So Make. what? we got a cupcake here. What are we eating, by the way? Uh, a cupcake. No, I know. Is it, <laughs> is it chocolate with vanilla icing? It's, a, it's a chocolate with... Um, I could do this, Smith. Um, mm. Cream cheese. 
It's very good. Ooh. That's so what did you say? You read the that, package. These might light again, so we got to be real careful. No, nah, they're not going to light again. Mm. <laughs> Happy birthday, Judah. This yeah, cupcake man. is delicious. I, uh, you know... You, you mean the world to, to us here, man, and I just happy birthday to you. All so, right. I appreciate so, that. So tell me, what is your fine, fa- fondest birthday memory? Fondest birthday memory. Oh, man, I've got I'm some... I'm doing real memory. talk today. I've got some really vague That's ones. That's the right answer. I've got some really vague ones... Uh, <laughs> About uh, you, you didn't follow his advice. Yeah, the answer is <laughs> to be to the point. Yeah, to sync with your answer. <laughs> so, as a yeah, chi- what's your what's your, what's your best birthday memory as a child? What was your like best memory? Uh, I remember. Well, I, eat the I remember cake. being at a park and having a cake with like race cars and stuff on it. And I don't think there was there wasn't anything like really. So you didn't make a big the family didn't make a big thing there. out of birthdays. Eh, not really. Uh, so in our house, it like goes. There's a birthday week and there's a birthday month. And oh, man. Neil yeah. Williamson, Judah's birthday gift. Smith and Miller not singing. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got that impression Neil. the last time we did some singing on the show and the viewers and listeners were saying, please stop. Oh, really? Yeah. No. Oh. Woody Fincham, Judah, the man that makes it happen. Happy birthday. Keep the sparklers out of the bourbon, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Woody. Um, well played, Woody Fincham. We love you, Woody. And, and we love when you come on the program. Any, um, before we get to the markets and we talk, oh, the icing just took a dive there. That's a blooper wheel waiting to happen. Oh, man. Smith is now currently licking the table of icing. Um, do you have well, any it birth- is icing. Do you have any birthday plans today before uh-huh. we talk markets and what's going down? None that I know of. No birthday plans? Um, none that I know of. Uh, I'm sure my parents will ask if I want to go to dinner somewhere. Okay. Well, I hope you, you go to a nice place. What's your go-to place? He likes Peter Chang's. Oh, that's right. I, we, uh, and I, no, oh, oh. It, used to be, it used to be Flaming Walk until they closed. Now I, now I need a replacement. So what is Flaming Walk now? Uh, I think it's just empty. I don't think I've driven no. by it. Flaming no. Walk is, um, is, is, is it going to be a Korean barbecue place? No. What is it? No, 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 no. So the Flaming Walk is now an auto parts store. Really? Um, or is that not the I don't Flaming think that's true. The Flaming Mog fl- it was the old hibachi place. Oh, that was the and Korean. And I think the hibachi place is still there. It's just empty. And, um, I it's think the Korean Lyon. barbecue place. It's, I think it's going to be a Korean barbecue place. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think it's going to be a Korean barbecue place. So as you can tell, Smith didn't have anything prepared today, but other than messing up his... So the problem with the mic being on the left when you're a lefty, mm-hmm. you know, the mic... <laughs> you got a trap right there. Technically, in, in television... Someone who came up in the TV world, if you were, if any of us were eating or drinking in the studio, at least in NBC 29, you'd be fired. Really? On the spot. Did I get fired? No, you didn't get fired. Uh, we have no rules here on the Isle of Seville Network. But that's how it was when I was a broadcaster at NBC 29. And why is that? I mean, expensive equipment. Icing on the desk. <laughs> Spilling the, the bourbon on the, the Mac on the desktop. <laughs> Never Spilling happened. the Vitae spirits on the uh, <laughs> yeah. microphone. Did you hear what he just said? That'll never happen. Never no, happen. Never happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All the, all That's the, what they all say. All the alcohol spills into our mouths. The last person Spill who said that'll too. never happen served a super hot piping coffee out of a McDonald's drive through window and burnt someone's lap. Remember that? Oh, And then yeah. that lawsuit followed. Yeah. Ooh. That crazy, crazy, ridiculous lawsuit that made you national headlines. You want to hear crazy lawsuits. Here's, here's one that uh, I don't know if it beats it, but comes pretty darn close. <laughs> Apparently, a woman got pregnant with her boyfriend's child and sued, or maybe it was, anyways, she sued, the, uh, she sued his, his insurance company and won like $5 million. Uh, well, that's ridiculous. And how, how did that? And can Neil Williamson, quick correction of what uh, we just said. Uh, Neil Williamson says, Flaming Walk has a permit to build two hotels on the site. But the project has stalled. Um, thank you, Neil Williamson, the president yeah. of the Free Enterprise Forum, for um, holding us to our P's and Q's on the broadcast. A- actually doing the show. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm grateful for that. That's what I like about the show. Um, I think I mentioned to you that Jamie Turner wished you a happy birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, JT, we that. love when you rep the pep and call pepper. So, I, you know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, I just kind of really got pumped on the 4th of July. It was just a lot of fun, a lot of... A lot of, um, just sort of a lot of good people and different 
different stripes and everybody was just it was just really a wonderful thing and and if you have an opportunity to do it please do it and and it was the good news about it let's say hi to uh the beautiful and talented mandy wickhauer on the west coast who i think is watching in california Ooh, mandy um, Probably. she says happy happy birthday jude i love you thank That's you mandy. mandy i love you sister. too um california Ooh, is that please. right mandy yeah, she should be. I mean, you know, Mandy gets around, so you know. She's know. globe. She's a globe trotter, Mandy. I didn't know that about you, Mandy. You're a globe so, trotter. So uh, I mean, I don't know if I'd call her a globe trotter, but she. I mean, let's go with globe trotter. The alternative, of what you said, was your sister gets around. So I think we're going to say she's a globe trotter, and she's watching right now. Yeah, did you so realize? Mandy, did you realize what you said? Mandy travels a lot. <laughs> is what we're going to say. Mandy travels a lot. Thank God you're here. Can you imagine the trouble that we don't? I'd get myself into. I, I try. Uh, Laura and my wonderful wife is like, "Why don't you take vacation? Why don't you come up with us to uh, Long Island, Southampton?" I oh, don't that, don't put it on. That me. would mean leaving Keith and Judah <laughs> to the studio and everything that we have built over the last fifteen years. And she goes, "You're right. Stay home." Oh, she never. Said she said, that. "You're right. Stay home." No, I'll handle she, the parade with she, our son and 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 your in-laws, so, my so, parents, by myself. So you're putting this all on me. Uh, no, I'm joking. Oh, on the way they, in, they always do this. They always they, it's, they they go in the summer. It's great. I, I, I love know. it. It's my uh, mother-in-law's birthday. My my uh, son, her grandson. They get to spend some time together. They have a great time they, around the beach. I get a little uh, little peace of mind without a four-year-old for a little bit, recharge, and then get ready for the rest of the summer. It's awesome. How do you handle being by yourself? I handle it well. I play a lot of uh, play a lot of squash. Eat some nice meals. Um, get some sleep. Mm -hmm. um, you sleep is hard to come when you have a four-year-old, um, so it's been it's been gonna, refreshing. Judo would say that I've been very chipper and pleasant in the office. Oh, Jerry is always chipper and pleasant. <laughs> you should not lie on your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> my dad doesn't do well when my when my mom. Goes Neither does Keith. I, I you know a little a little heads up by the way, gentlemen. Um, Yona's heading back. She hasn't been home in five years. Yona's heading home for two weeks in October. Wow. So I'm going to be a bachelor. You're going to be weeks. a bachelor for two weeks? I'm going to be a bachelor uh -oh. for two weeks. So you, you folks better, uh, better watch out. Cause Let's uh, put a news bulletin out there. Put a news Let's bulletin Let's get an APV out, out there. You're going you're gonna to have to bring some guests. We're going to have to bring some guests along to keep me a little, uh, a little on, on edge. You getting some text messages over there? Yeah, one or two. What one is it? A two. happy birthday? Good for you. I just got a. Uh, I just got a messenger from uh, from my aunt. Oh, that's oh. fantastic. He's loved. So, so you're the oldest. You, how do you fit in the family tree? I'm the oldest child in uh, in my immediate family, got and it. then I have two younger two younger sisters, who both live out in Southern California. There you go. But really, what, where in Southern California? Uh, Palm Springs area. Oh, cool. You That's get, a beautiful area. You get to see them much? Yeah, yeah, they they fly out fairly often. I was thinking the other way. I was thinking about you going that, uh, going that way. I don't... I know, you, I know in the last three and a half years you haven't because you're always sitting <laughs> in that seat. So, yeah. so um, I'm, my bike ride from this morning is catching up with me. Okay. Uh, uh, what does that mean? That means that if, my, if I'm perspiring, it's that I haven't quite cooled down. You perspire from, a little bit. Yeah, I, uh, it's, uh, it, was, it was a hot Under the lights here at the set? Uh, the lights don't help, help out much. And, uh, you know, I did a, a pretty long ride this morning, and the humidity is catching, catching up with me. So I might have to take my jacket off here. Do it. In, take the in, jacket in, off. In the middle. Uh, in the middle. No, uh, no approval needed. Um, no uh, approval needed for comfort here on the set. How's, uh, what's the mood on the street? What's the market like? You know, the mood on the street... You know, we've been talking this O shift stuff for several months, mm -hmm. and um, it's it, the mood on the street. It's it's kind of interesting. The the <clears throat> we're still having we're still depending on the location. We're still seeing multiple offers yeah. come in, but they're not a dozen or half a dozen or or whatever like that. It's a it's a couple of it's a couple of offers on it, um, and it seems at least from from our perspective, we're. we're We've been super. We've been blessed and super busy, both on the listing and the and the sales side. It just seems like I, the tempo is picking up a little bit. Uh, but at the end of the day, the affordability index is a little bit askew. Uh, you know, for the the first time home buyer is, is kind of uh, hitting screwed. Uh, well, they're hitting. The, they they just got to be a little bit more persistent. But it's 
there's the millennial buyer is about 20% larger than my pool. And the next three years, according to all the experts, um, these buyers are going to be coming in in droves. And, you know, it's still, even depending upon how you're looking at it, it's still cheaper or more cost effective to buy than to rent because the rents are just going through the roof. So yeah. I just, you know, I just don't see the market slowing down, but we're, we're super blessed. But now's the time when, you know, you, you know, there's three things that pop up on my phone every morning, and I've said this a bunch of times. It's at 5.30, be professional, be caring, and be trustworthy. And, you know, I, I struggle at all three every day. Every, you know, it's, it's hard work to do that. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. But I've kind of been off the game a little bit because we've been celebrating uh, since Friday. So I really haven't been keeping my thumb on. I literally didn't even check the market stats this morning. And I can't tell you. The last time you didn't do that. I haven't done it in four years. How long have we been doing this? So we talked about a topic yesterday on the show that I found intriguing, Judah found intriguing, um, the Waffle House on 5th Street closing due to no labor. Yeah. How often have you ever been at the Waffle House? Um, well, we talked about that as well. That's the only after-hours restaurant in town. I, I don't think I've ever actually been in a Waffle House. Ever? No, I've never been in a Oh, man. Wow. You're missing out. Yeah, we talked about the hash browns. We love yeah, the hash browns. You can't, you can't beat their hash browns. Um, occasionally on a nice long... And greasy. On, yeah, a long road trip, that little Waffle House on the exit sign. Yeah, but you got to remember where I, grew, where I grew up, right? But you travel, don't you? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you tend to tell me yeah, I travel. Yeah, you travel. You tell me I travel a lot. But the, fa the, the, element, was more the, um, the element was more the no labor. That you can't keep your business open. Yeah. So... I, I wanted today to be a fun show, a little bit celebrate Judah. I think um, we did that on on Judah's end, end of it, but uh, and I, but the R word is creeping its way into our lives. We find out this week, right? We right. find out this week officially what the, what the numbers are. Yeah, the yeah. GDP number for Q two. Q two is now behind us. January, February, March, yeah. Q one, April, May, June, Q two. We find out the number this week. The Atlanta number. Out of the Atlanta Fed was uh, a minus two points. So that shows an early indicator that, I mean, it's, it's a recession. I mean, we already know it's a recession. Look, I, it's, uh, we are in a recession. What I'm worried about is going into stagflation. And <clears throat> I, I'm wondering, you know, if, if this, in, in, I, I think this time next year, I may be wrong, but I think this time next year, you, you're going to see um, unemployment numbers climb. Yeah. And then, then we're going to be officially in stagflation. But this recession, I feel that we're actually in one. Um, the experts will probably tell you we're not there yet. Uh, I'm not so sure, glo you know, nationally. I think we're, I think we're we went down last quarter. I think this quarter is not going to be below last quarter. I may be wrong on that end of it. I think we'll do a little flatlining on it. But you know, now's the time for those folks out there in the you know. Again, today we had, I had no topic, no setup, anything for today, just us having a good time. One of the great things about what I do for a living, being your own business owner and all that stuff, and not being dependent upon, uh, you know, somebody as a salary kind of thing, you know, all I have to do to beat inflation is grow my business by 10%. That's, but that's, so if I sell 10 houses a year, I sell one more house. I just, I just beat inflation, right? So we're lucky. We get to do that. I know that sounds a little flippant. I think that is, um, so do you think you're going to sell, you think you're going to do 10% more business this oh, year? Oh, no, we're 30% off where we were last year. But I don't count last year as, as a normal year. You say last year's an anomaly. So you're saying you're- Actually, you're, I count the last two years as an anomaly. I base all so my- So what are you on, two, off, uh, on 19, 2019? 19. So are you up or down on, two, on 19? We're up on 19. What plus? It's over ten. Okay, percent. that's good. It's over ten percent. Nice. And you just call twenty and twenty-one gravy trains. Well, it's not gravy trains. It's just you can't. You they can't, can't be the norm. You can't build a budget right off of that. It's just an unrealistic expectation. I build. A, we built our budgets off of nineteen numbers. Michael Plecker, uh, Yes Realty Partners charter member. Charter member. 
says we still have not reached the point where a buyer can ask for closing cost assistance. Oh, I disagree. So save your I disagree. money. I disagree with that. So he wife. says, is he saying don't buy the house? I think that's what he is. That, is that what he's saying? No, 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 he no. He says no. we still haven't reached the point where a buyer can ask for closing cost assistance. So no, save he, your money. No, what he's saying is save your cash for your down, for your closing costs and also. But I, 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 I hate to disagree with Mike. We just did one. You know, and I just did one with, uh, with seller concessions. It's, it's what were the concessions? A cl you know, closing cost assistance. And that's what Michael's saying. Michael's saying, you know, save your cash for closing cost assistance. You did a deal where the seller contributed to the closing cost of the buyer. Mm -hmm. Half the cost? Wow. It was about half, yeah. Mm -hmm. You hear that, Judah? Yeah. Yeah. So That's you're going to start seeing that creeping itself back up in here. And, you know, people like Michael and, and a bunch of other realists. Woody Fincham, we're seeing closing costs covered on many contracts now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's you know, the, the skill set that you need today is if you got to be thinking 2016, 17, 18, at some level, you're going to probably need skill sets from back when it was 2010 and 11, right? Once we came out of the time of great un unpleasantness, but you know, now the time, you know the, the pros are going to do great in what's what's coming, and uh, but we're excited about it, and you're going to start seeing teams grow. We're excited about the growth of our little little brokerage, a little bit of uh, office that we have set up, little teams we have set up on it, because you're going to start needing. That people, agents, and and the industry as a whole really haven't done this in quite some time. Yeah, you guys time. haven't been through some uh, bear markets in. Yeah, what? so when's it's the not, last time you've been through a bear market? But Was that it's 13 not thirteen years ago. It's not a bear market though. Ah, uh, I, I know you're you're managing perception. I'm or not trying managing to perception. manage perception. I'm not trying to. There manage There are very perception. few people that would not characterize this as a bear market right now. No. So you're talking about the stock market. Stock market is super bear. And I'm talking about real estate. Real estate is not a bear market right now. Okay. It is not a bear market. It's, listen, but why are you smiling? I, I just, so tell I, me why you think I, it's I, a bear I, market. I, I Let's think, do this. I think we all see that the, um, the, fine, the new constructions are slowing. Oh, that's a great We can talk about that. New construction is slowing. Okay. Um, buyers are, are getting spooked on rates. But they're not. You're seeing the, the pendulum shift where it's becoming more a buyer's market than a seller's market. 3%, Woody Fincham just posted on the feed, 3% or less of closing costs, contributions from sellers is not unheard of right now. Yeah, I agree. Um, so you define that as a bear market? I, I, I think the housing market is heading into a potential bear market. Um, you have two thirds less the inventory sold this year than last year. Okay. Two thirds. So from a volume perspective, from in 2022, there are two thirds less homes going to be sold this year than last year. Okay. How many homes were sold last year? Back of the napkin. Oh, I, I can't. Back of the napkin. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that without the stats in front of me. But we're <clears throat> two thirds less the inventory sold. Yeah, but if you compare That's, if you compare that to 2019. It's not so. I, you have to define bear. You can't define real estate the same way you define the stock market. Okay, I'll, I'll change the statement. I think real estate's got some headwinds in front of it. Oh, and we, what have we been talking about from yeah. the last sizable headwinds? We've been talking about this since, since mid-April. Oh, shift. The market is shifting, but it's not. People are still buying and selling homes. I, I had this. I had a conversation with a buyer, the a seller, excuse me, the other day. Um, and they were like, oh my God, you know, da, 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 da. I said, well, hold the time out. You bought your house in 19, that they have to sell. They bought their home for 400. The market value is now 475. That O shift graphic really contributes to this talk show. Oh, you? I, I, I'm, I'm glad the O shift graphic got put on the show. Who, who, really, made, who made that O shift graphic? That graphic really contributes that? to the show. <laughs> Keith, did Keith make that graphic? I, that, I, that graphic, you made it? No, Keith. Okay. Oh, the, it really contributed to the show there. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that was included. Go ahead. Go ahead. I apologize. I regress. You do that on purpose. You, you, John Blair, hello, my friend. You throw me off so my ADD gets gets gets. gets no, I mean, it, let's, this is a great springboard and a topping point. Um, I, if, and I'll finish, hopefully. Three is 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 the market, and and he's probably got some perspective he can offer too. I'll I'll say your game has really stepped up because you've been reading a lot more to prepare for this show. 
Um, so I've noticed that you got uh, a lot more ammunition lately, and you got a lot of positive and good things to say, and I want to hear them. But I, here's the topic some point. Some subjects. And I will get out of your way. Y'all got y'all's way here. Can't believe I just said y'all. I will get out of your way. There are obvious Lauren, head, come home. <laughs> the obvious headwinds for the market okay. are interest rates, lack of inventory, okay. a, a, a shallowing buyer pool, and the pendulum swinging from a seller's market to a buyer's market. So this has been going on for three and a half decades as long as I've been doing it. This pendulum slips back and forth, and there's always a little bit of a different nuances. This is where you need to be a pro. This is why you need a trusted advisor to help you nav navigate that. This, this comparing it to a bear market or a bull market, it, you can't do that because it's so specific on, on what we're doing. But if, if I had my numbers in front of me, um, I can tell you, because we did a show about this, uh, about how many transactions were recently versus 2018 and all that stuff. And we are multiple times more than we were four or five years ago. I, I, don't, I can't quote the numbers because I can't remember them. So if we're... Well, in 22? No, 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 no. 22 versus 18 and... 2022 versus 18. I, I'd be very curious... I have the numbers, I just don't have them with me. Yeah, I'd be very curious to know this specific question. 2022, the first half of the year, versus 2019, the first half of the year, inventory sold, specific yeah. count. I, I, I have that. I did a spreadsheet on it for a show. I just don't remember the number. And I, but I do remember 2022 was up here, and 19 was down here. So there's a, there's a substantial delta between between the two. I just can't remember the exact number on it. If there's a real estate agent watching, they can easily pull that up on, on Paragon to go ahead and do that. But it's just, we're still in single digit days on market, right? The, it's just shifted, it just oh shifted. It's just different on that end of it. It's not worse, we're not, you know, I don't want somebody, it's important to me, I don't want somebody to use the word bear and convert it to balloon, right? So I don't want that connection to be made. Well, a bear market is not a, is not indicative of a balloon. So I understand that. Yeah. I just don't want somebody to make that leap and go, oh my God, it's a bear market and it's a balloon. What it is, is it's like a decelerating market, right? So prices are decelerating. And the story that I was about to, to tell before I it came back on that is I had a client. We helped him sell a house. It was in 18 or 19, I think, I think it was eight, 19 on it for $400,000, help them buy it, excuse me, for $400,000, and they need to move, we need to sell it. And the value for the home is about four seventy-five dollars now. So they it's got, great. They picked up $475,000 in as many, three years roughly, on that end of it. And the question, he says, well, I'm worried about a buyer not wanting to buy because they're expecting that type of return, that type of appreciation. That is not normal appreciation. Sure. Double digit, so what's gonna happen, if you listen to all the experts and us, you're going to be back at the 3%, 4%, 5%. So that 475, if you buy today, it's not going to go to 450. No, I know. I think people so realize you, when, that. Well, when you use the yeah. word bear, that's what people think. At least that's no, what I. That's at least that's, that's what not I. Not what people think. Okay, well, that's what I thought. People, people, people. Uh, the bear market means we're heading into. We have headwinds in front of us. Okay. The market's going to slow. And the inventory is not going to have the same momentum so let me ask it you once a question. had. Do you think the market slowing is a good thing or a bad thing? Um, I think the um, I think the inventory is a serious problem. I think not having the inventory is a serious problem. And the conversation that I'm hearing in like um, our social circles are this: it's people that have homes. You fall into this category. I fall into this category um, where they purchased a home, they have significant equity in their home. Massive equity. You have massive equity in your house. I have massive equity. You have massive. And they're like, the conversation came up. Are we going to figure out a way to monetize or utilize or enjoy this equity? Hmm. Move out, sell. And the conversation is, even if we try to sell this house, we're not going to have an interest rate that's equivalent <clears throat> to the one we have now. Yeah, but, th but that was We're never... also not going to be able to find a house that is going to be equivalent to the one we have, or if we trade up and try to get something that's bigger, it's exponentially more than what the exit of our current house will allow us to get. Mm. So they're staying sticky. 
So this exact client has to do that. Is ex I had the exact conversation with them, and we did the math. So we're going to sell your house for X dollars. You're going to walk away with this amount of money. Prices are stabilizing, which is good. Yeah. Right. So you're 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 not having double digit increases. You're having reasonable single digit increases. So of the eight couples at that party. Seven said they were have no intention of moving because they don't know what they would get. Me, I was like, I'll do it. I'm ready to rock and roll. My wife's like, no, slow down. So that was eight couples, sure. all eight, saying, and, where would we go? And they were, what would we get? And they were all in the millennial age. They were all mid thirties to yeah. mid forties. Yeah, yeah. And so you're now doing this 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 other this other millennial buyer, which is this move up buyer, right? They bought four or five years ago. They have a substantial amount of equity. Their life changes are, are, are happening. You know, another blessing is happening or whatever. Uh, and they're trying to make a decision on what, what, what to do. But life changes is what's going to indicate that. But from a math perspective, you know, if you're bringing enough cash down and I'm buying something down, your monthly nut's not going to be that much different at but I can get a 15-year mortgage right now at 4%, a little over 4%. I, I appreciate your positive and rosy outlook. Yeah, but, but I can tell you it's not positive or rosy. I just know what our business model is, and I know what we're doing, and we're busy as all can be because the people at that party are seeking out folks that can help them navigate this. You know, and, and, I, and then it is what it is, right? Um, Talk to me about new construction. Ah, there's your, there's, there's, there's the... Why is it slowing? Yeah, it's slowing. Wow. At the beginning of it or the end of it? Right now. No, 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 in the, in the new construction process. So you're starting to see some of the guys that are in the development space take a pause. Yeah. And they're taking, we were having this conversation yesterday on the phone, weren't we, Judah? Yeah. Or the client. Yeah, they're taking, they're taking a pause. So yeah. that is actually going to impact market uh, inventory substantially. And what they're doing is they're chasing opportunities that can turn around. I, I can't, um, I can't uh, you know, give specifics on it, of course. But they're, they're chasing opportunities that, and it's very interesting, they're chasing opportunities that six months ago it was, I need something that I can get rezoned quickly, to now something, you know what, I'm okay with a two year rezoning process. Because they're letting the market adjust itself a little bit, they have the capital to, to, to do it. But we're gonna go through, we're gonna go through the inventory, the, the lot inventory that's there, then there's gonna be a stop on it because there's going to be some stuff in the pipeline that's going to take a little bit of time to go ahead and get it rezoned and built. So you're 100% right. New construction is has been the bright spot for a while. I think new construction, you're going to hit a pause a little bit on it uh, only because of it's so many different things. They don't have lot inventory. Um, costs are going up. They don't have folks to, to build them on all this stuff. Invent uh, excuse me, interest rates are, are climbing on it. On that end of it, so I, I do see new construction softening. Brian has this comment. Um, Brian, where are you watching? I believe you're in Spring Creek, um, but correct me if I'm wrong. Jerry, we're in the same position as you and uh, those couples that you were talking about. We do have equity in our house, and we would like to expand to a bigger one. But if you look at the market, there's not something there for us to buy. We would have to climb significantly into another price point stratosphere to get the kind of house that we want in today's market. That's kind of what worries me, and I obviously know a lot less than you guys, but people, you know, uh, middle class people starting to get priced out of the market. And, and not only that, but then you've got, uh, you've got all these investors coming in, uh, you know, not just, not just big time investors, but you've got people, you know, looking at the, uh, the Airbnb market and yeah. buying up properties to turn into Airbnb, Airbnbs, which are not rentals. I mean, you know, they're not being used for long-term. It rentals. doesn't improve the housing stock, right? So you hit the nail on the head. And you know they're not policing that as much anymore right now. No, 
the Airbnbs, and they don't have the personnel in play. City of Charlottesville and Almar County, yeah. they don't have the policing in, in place for the illegal Airbnbs because technically by law, you have to live there half the year Correct. Yeah. to have a legal Airbnb. They're not doing that right now. Yeah, so what will happen? Also, and this isn't, this isn't indicative of, a, of a housing, necessarily a housing bubble, but I think a lot of the people that are jumping into the Airbnb uh, uh, investment business are using uh, they're using the projected earnings on previous purchases to get really big loans for new purchases. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. Uh, it's part of the business that I do with 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 in the investment properties here. The people that get, lend you the give you the financing and the money, they don't take 100% of projected revenue no, they, to finance. You it. have to have it's a significant haircut. Yeah, you have that. to you have to you have to be able to support that without yeah, that the revenue. Income. A lot of people that are buying the Airbnbs are not doing that on projected revenue. Just, just throwing this out there. They're doing it with large cash positions. That's how they're buying. Them. Yeah. So Judah's on as usual. Judah jumps in and, and says some love pearl, when you chime per, in, Judah. pearls of nuggets. And it's Judah's birthday for those just chiming in. Vanessa yeah, and we, we, had, we had sparklers yeah. uh, and cupcakes and Smith can't eat cupcakes apparently. Delicious cupcakes. Delicious. Oh, she's giving you props. Vanessa's giving you props. And Danny O'Day said your Yankee's showing with the fact that you've never been to the Waffle House. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> total Yankee. That's total Yankee. But I'll tell you, um, I, I know Dinah's. Oh, I know. I have no doubt. I, I know, know Dinah's. Dinah's like the Pope knows holy water. So, oh. But Judah, I stole that from you. I know you did. So, so, so do the viewers and listeners. Yeah, so uh, Judah's spot on, though. What, what's ultimately going to happen here is the missing middle, right? So the missing middle is going to get worse. And the missing middle isn't necessarily product, right? Homes. The missing middle is the buyer, is the is the is the person, is the income thing, and that's the middle class. So what's going to happen here is the upper end are going to be able to have the money. The lower end, and I've already been reading reports this morning about this stuff. They are starting to relax the lending requirements already. They're lowering credit score. Right? As soon as this interest rate started climbing up, it's, the credit scores are starting to run. They're starting lessening the, 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 the lending requirements. No doc loans are going to start creeping their way back into it. And probably the federal government is going to come in and say, okay, you know, at the lower income level, here are loan programs. So Judah's spot on. This, this middle pivot is going to be a little, a little difficult on, on that end of it for what you guys what you guys outlined, but the, the undoubtedly the middle class is getting pinched. Undoubtedly, the middle class is getting pinched, and a uh, healthy don't economy. They, don't they always? Don't we seem to always get pinched in the middle? I mean, it seems to be happening uh, significantly more than in past. And a good economy is only as strong as its middle class. Agreed. The middle class is the foundation for any healthy economy. Agreed. Um, the move up buyer. We often talk about the central. Zuntaik. Uh -oh. Excuse me. Strawberry, we often talk, strawberry, strawberry. That's right. We often talk about the first time home buyer on the show. Mm -hmm. Why do we not highlight the, the, the tribulations, the trials of the move up buyer? Well, I think that's what we're doing right now. The, um, man, there's a lot of comments coming in. The move up buyer is now, what is the price point for the move up buyer for a family of four, for a family of five? Is that price point for the move up buyer family of four or five, 800K? <laughs> is so, that the price point? <laughs> Oof. I think it is. Ouch. Because you figure the first, depends, the, depends, the starter depends. home is 300 and up. It Say the starter home is 300 Jerry, Jerry, 450. It depends on the where. Right? Yeah. So Al call it Almore County or Charlottesville. Well, the where is changing now. Say right? Almore County or Charlottesville. Those are the most desirable in well, Southern Virginia. Well, you can get something in a different jurisdiction, Green or Fulvan or Louisa at a different price point. A family of four, a family of five but is probably going to want Almore County schools. They're going to pursue them first. No, you're making an assumption on oh. that end of it, but but... The data backs it up. Well, my, my children went to Fulvana. Well, I know. And, and, it, and, and they why, is, why did Crozet boom? Uh, without a doubt. Western Amar. Western Amar. Henley. Well, it's also, it's also beautiful. I, I rode my bike that this weekend up there, so it's beautiful on that end. Of, What's the move-up threshold in Western Amar? So Western Amar, there is no move-up threshold. It, it's probably it's, 850, 900? You can't. I've got four clients I'm trying to find something for, and they can't. And if family but, but, four, but family look, five? Uh, everything from uh, millennials to move to family of four or five. So think about this. Everybody this from a young couple trying to start to to move ups. So in 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 the Western Albemarle area, 
if it's got an eight in front of it, it needs help. That's what I'm saying. So the starter home, we talk so much but, on this network about people buying a house and getting into a home, a starter home. But, we never talk about, today we're doing it, the person going from the starter home to the okay. next level. And so, the delta didn't used to be 300 to 900. The delta used to be 300 to like 450 or 475. So this goes back to the missing middle, the first half of the missing middle conversation. The first half of the missing middle conversation is the product. The second half of the missing middle conversation is the buyer, is the, is the client, is the, is the family on that, on that end of it. And to Neil Williamson's point on this, if you help one side of this triangle, right, so let's just call this a triangle. One is the, the first time home buyer, the second is the move up mid, middle, missing middle buyer, and then there's the, the upper end buyer. If you start increasing any one of those quadrants, it helps the other one, it helps the other one, it helps the one other one. So, the, so, so why there's so much drive, even this is across the country. I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm part of a national cohort on this stuff. Um, that's why there's such a push to try to increase inventory in the middle. Because if you increase inventory in the middle, you help the lower, you help the first time home buyer and you help the up, upper end of it because the people are moving through the, as you said, the, the process. I'm aware. Of, so, so if I can get in first time home buyer, right, and I get in a great deal and all this stuff, but if there's nothing for me to move to in the middle and I got to make a jump all the way to 800 to a million, as the viewers are saying and the people at your party, I'm just sitting still. So this is a lot more than interest rates. And a these, lot more. these are indications of headwinds that lead to a bear market. Yeah, well, I just prefer not to use the word bear because it implies something else. But No, it doesn't. At least, for me, it does. The but, definition is not what you're saying the definition is. Okay. Um, just so you know. Um, Vanessa Parkhill has this uh, comment. Um, it breaks my heart that I think my kids fall into that missing middle. Lee has college friends living in Arlington whose rent went up 30% for a one bedroom apartment. How are those young professionals supposed to save for a home? I literally have the same discussion with my daughter and my son-in-law, right? Doctor, teacher, moving out of his residency, making ridiculous, I think 50 grand a year is what they make, $52,000 a year. And then they're moving out of Seattle because they can't I mean, afford it. He does 52K a year plus the debt he has, the debt service payment? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Well. You hear that, Judah? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. And my daughter works. And that's a doctor. Yeah. Well, so that's with the re with, with with. Is it a quarter million in debt? I mean, I know I know he's got. It, I, I think we, you've said it on the show before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's more than that, actually. Yeah. But yeah. I know he's not. You know, he's he's not a. He's not up there. You know. Well, because he's at his residency. The, so the yeah. way residency yeah. works is they get paid a ridiculous amount of money and they work ridiculous hours all that stuff but he's moving they're moving out in june and july and so they're part of their selection process which we're helping them with is okay where can i get a job that makes a decent amount of money and where is the housing inventory and the schools and so forth and so on because we're going to be a grand uh, no, g3 another, number three. another number three another one coming in uh, a lot of comments coming in a lot of comments coming in um let's get to danny o'day the Airbnb market is horrible for any local housing market because it forces competition for home prices away from local average income and into a national pricing competition. We are lucky to live in a place that people want to visit, but allowing the um, STR properties to run rampant destroys the transition property market that used to exist for first-time buyers trying to move from renting to owning. Well and, said. And Daniel it also Day. screws up the hotel industry. I have a client of mine that we yeah. just helped them open up a facility over here in Pantops, and we're trying to find two more locations for them to build homes, that build um, uh, hotels on, and A, there's nothing available to buy, and B, the ones that are available to buy that go through the rezoning process is insane, and they're basically walking away. So all that, we're roughly several thousand hotel rooms short in yeah. this area. The, the hotels are stacking paper in this area. Stack and paper. Oh, if you can get one built. If yeah. you can get one built, you can get one done. They're, they're, doing, they're doing great. The occupancy is off the trust. That's the reason we're trying to look for some more property. But the point I'm trying to make is 
in, unless they make hotels easier to build, the Airbnbs are just going to start. Well, this is what I don't understand. And maybe it's a personnel, it's obviously a personnel issue. Why are they not reinforcing or why are they not busting balls more on these Airbnbs that are not legit? So, so They're losing tax revenue. Yeah. Losing tax revenue from the municipality, and they're taking housing stock away from renters and buyers. It's like it, it, there's nothing positive that comes from not policing the Airbnb. But, but, but how do you regulate it? Like, you just you, go to the homestay websites. So they were doing this. Yeah. They were doing this. They had someone in the various municipi mm -hmm. like headquarters, city hall, and they were going to the homestay websites, like the Airbnb websites where they were listed, and vetting them that way. Yeah, they were just and they were flagging them. them. Yeah, they were cross-referencing them. Yeah, but so, that's not happening now. Well, it's A, you're, you're spot on. They don't have enough personnel to do it. Frankly, I think they can automate it. Yeah. Dude, there's, there's a business to be built. Maybe this business exists. Someone creates software. We could create this. Yeah. It software that vets homestays and jurisdictions sells that software to jurisdictions and positions it in the cell this will get you more tax revenue for your municipality you pay us for this software and will pay for itself five times over by getting more tax revenue to your jurisdiction so it's a database program that's all it is i could build that it's a it's a database but so one they don't have enough people Two, it's not automated. It may be that, or it's just not automated enough. Generally, the way this stuff works, gentlemen, it's just like a zoning ordinance, right? If you're not supposed to have chickens, right, and you start having chickens in there, right, it's a matter of Judah dropping, it's not a dime anymore, a quarter, whatever a phone call costs these days. Your neighbor? You, that's Your neighbor? Exactly, that's exactly, that's exactly you? how, that's exactly how zoning is enforced. Because you have the same thing in zoning, by the way. Right, so, so what about all of the, uh, around um, UVA, right? So the, the city says you can't have any more, I believe it's five people or four people, I mean, it's either four or five. Five unrelated people live in a single residence. Dog. Every I, house around UVA is breaking that law. Exactly right. So there's a law that says you yeah. can't do that. But who's it's not stop enforced? It? That's what I'm saying. Who's policing that? It's not enforced. And I, yeah, I think. And that's Key's point is, who, who are you going to have? Going? Right. Who? Why? 25%. Let's put it in perspective. And then let's, let's take the next step off of that. It's now enforced. Now you've got you to implement the enforcement, right? In other words, right. you've just got flagged. Now you have to have the personnel to kind of bill it, you know, uh, prosecute, whatever, however the path goes yeah. on that end. We'll take it a step further. Somebody's got to be doing the paperwork. We need somebody to police the Airbnbs, but 25% of the police department currently is empty. Do we want people to police crime, or do we want people to police the no, Airbnbs? No, no. So that would, would the, would, but would the police would, be doing that job? It, it would, no, it would be completely different departments. My point, the point of what I'm making is, they can't fill the police department with bodies. I mean, that's to a police problem. crime. How are they going to get somebody to police the Airbnbs if exactly. they can't? You see what I'm saying? But they can't well, exactly. fill NDS either. Well, NDS, I, they have filled now. They got someone over there, but they can't fill the job. Okay, let's take it a step further. Okay, let's here's how we'll take it a step further. Charlottesville has become so expensive to live, and if you offered someone the job to police the Airbnbs... Where would they live? Where would they live? Why the hell would they take the job? Why would you want to be the Airbnb police commissioner, the person who's policing the illegal Airbnbs, when you can't afford to live in Charlottesville? What are they going to pay that person? They're going to pay that person 37 35 well, what you do is... They're not going to live in Charlottesville. How, how, why would they take that job? Yeah, so there's a fee that's connected to the Airbnb. That helps pay the cost. It helps pay the cost. That, that's, that's how you do that. So if you want to register an Airbnb, there's a fee. There's also taxes. They're paying hotel taxes on, on the end of it. And a lot of people don't know that they're supposed to do this. So Danny O'Day and Neil Williamson say that the software for policing the Airbnb already does exist. It's called Granicus, G-R-A-N-I-C-U-S. Yeah, I figured somebody has It's a it. government software banner. So there goes that idea that we had to generate some revenue for V&V &V brands. So then the question becomes, do they want to, yeah, do, do they want to, it becomes the enforcement part of it. So it's like, all righty, Jerry's not supposed to have his chickens. Judah drops a quarter and calls Keith 
over at the enforcement thing. So now what happens, Coach? The lot, yeah. Is so, it, is what, it dropping a quarter because of inflation? Okay. <laughs> it dropped a dollar. I don't, does any, is there actually a phone booth That's anywhere? when people were making fun of 50 Cent after the Super Bowl show because it looked like 50 Cent had put on some weight and they called them, uh, what do they call them, like <laughs> dollar? <laughs> That's hilarious. $50 instead of 50 cents? Is there actual, Silver dollar. Is there an actual payphone in Charlottesville at all? I don't know if I've ever seen one. Is there a payphone in Charlottesville? Anyone know where there is a payphone? Is there a payphone in the lob? In the, the last one I remember seeing was over by, oh, what is it? It's that little, uh, that little uh, convenience store across from the school on uh, Hydraulic slash Rio. That convenience oh, store, is, that, is that the Hilltop Market? That's exactly what that is. Hilltop that was, Market? Yeah. But the last time I saw that phone booth was probably years and years ago. So, so you, you want to know how much does it cost to make a phone call through a payphone? Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't even know if one even exists. But yeah. okay. Well, I can tell you that a candy bar is now two bucks plus. Well, do I want to go through depends the whole story the that I bar, used to get two where you cents? Get it. They're not all two dollars. Snicker bar? When's the last time you bought a Snicker bar? Go to the market next door. We're right next to the market on 4th Street and buy a Snicker bar. I bet you it's a buck 89 plus tax. Uh, and I agree with you a thousand percent. Yeah. Not that I've bought a Snicker bar. Buck 89 right plus tax. So now, now you've got to enforce it, right? So how do you enforce it? Right? How, how do you, how do you, so you've now flagged them. Now you enforce it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Judah, uh, Mr. Enforcer. I didn't know I was supposed to do that. This is Woody Fincham's comment. Woody Fincham is fantastic. Well, Woody Fincham is the president of Fincham and Associates, the founder and president. All around A plus guy, Woody Fitchum is a bourbon aficionado. And he's soon to buy a new bike. He's got a phenomenal beard. Mm -hmm. He's going to be cycling, evidently. Yeah, yeah, he's going yeah. to be a I, cyclist. He and I were emailing over the weekend. Oh, get ready, Woody. This is a fraternity you're about to join here. Um, he says this in order to have, and he's an appraiser, by the way. He's come on the talk show. He's a respected man in this business. One of business. our wonderful sponsors. In order to have a healthy real estate economy, the markets have to be accepting of buyers being able to transition to higher market tiers. That is the problem right now. Transitioning upwards is a glass ceiling due to price. First time home buyers can't get started, so the cycle has to reset somehow. Ooh, hmm. he said cycle. Ooh, Neil Williamson has a payphone location tracker Ooh. on the comment <laughs> he would, section. He would actually. They're, so holy they, crap, so there's they, a lot of payphones. So the answer of Woody's question or Woody's comment on that. Not only the reason there's it's so expensive, there's nothing to buy, right? We don't have that missing middle product to to buy, and it's just out of curiosity from Woody, when he takes a look at a an appraisal with an Airbnb in it, I wonder how much extra boost or not does that give to value? Well, does he know? Of, does he know that there's oh, an yeah. Airbnb? He, 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 I would assume he would know. You know every time when you're doing an appraisal with Airbnb, Woody? I, I would. Think he would know if he does a physical. That's a great question for Woody. But I think if you do a physical uh, inspection, you're going to be able to tell. If, I went. Uh, I got home. Uh, that's, that's a great question. I don't know. I don't know if you can actually. I don't know if he. Well, why would he need to know if it's Airbnb when he's just valuing the home, well, appraising the home? Well, because some. Does it make it more valuable if it's an Airbnb? That's the question. That's what you're saying. That's what the question I'm trying to ask. Does an Airbnb? But but the bank is not going to finance the house purchase because it's going to be an Airbnb. And that's the second question for Woody. Does he yeah. see that if if they're in his valuations? Does he include that? If that, anything, I would say the Airbnb would hurt the value of the home? Could you have transient guests in the house who are less likely to take care of the house? Yeah. So what would happen with the Airbnb? So this whole conversation about Airbnb and housing affordability was part of this Portland and Seattle conversation because they removed the requirement of having owner occupied to do that. Yeah. Molly, that's where I found it from, Jamie Turner. Jamie Turner posts, that's where I started figuring this out. Molly Cogner on Twitter, socialist dog mom, did an entire thread on Airbnbs. And she highlighted, I mean, I would call Molly an investigative journalist. She was a concerned citizen. In fact, I would encourage anyone to support her Patreon. She did a very in-depth thread on how Airbnbs are not being policed in the city of Charlottesville. And then she started herself highlighting the illegal Airbnbs and reporting them to City Hall. So it's, it's interesting. She legitimately yeah. was dropping dime, dropping quarters, dropping dollars <laughs> on illegal well, Airbnbs. we got to figure <clears throat> I, I, on that 
payphone tracker? Yeah, you want to know where the payphones are? I want to know where the closest one is. I'm going to find out how There's many. There's a really close I've, one. I've got some. Yeah, well, Neil Williamson sent a link for all the payphones in Charlottesville. You want me to rattle them off? You might have the same link. Well, it could I'm be. just looking for the closest one so I can figure out how much. The closest the one phone. is at the, um, is right over there, right, I'd say half a, you know, half a mile from us, the Tar Tarleton Oak Exxon. Oh, yeah, sure. On High Street, coming into oh, downtown. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, there's yeah. a payphone there. That's right. There's a payphone at the Howard Johnson on West Main Street. Um, there's payphones there. There's a payphone at Charlottesville Oil Company. Burger Busters, which is Taco Bell on Rio Road, has a uh, payphone, Taco Bell on Rio Road. Um, a bunch of restaurants still have payphones. The Quick Pick Convenience Store on Angus Road has a payphone. And would For you those that know, that's behind the porn shop. Really? Literally. Okay. Thanks Just for wanted sharing. to see what the response to that would be. I didn't get a response from Thank, that. Thanks for sharing. Um, <laughs> that has a payphone. Aren't you thankful he shared that with you? <laughs> yes. I try to give a landmark. That's where it's located. <laughs> you know where the porn shop is. Is that across from... No, uh, I don't. You don't know where the porn shop is? It's by 29. I do not. It's by Best, Best Buy. I do not. It's by World Market. Okay, all right. So we'll move on from that. Um, the Econo Lodge has a uh, payphone as yeah, well. Yeah, we don't know where all the porn shops are. Okay, there's only one. There's only <laughs> well, one. Well, the fact that you know there's only one anyway. Who doesn't know that the porn shop is there? I, I've lived here for 22 years. I drive by. Uh, Bill McChenzie, welcome to the program. Woody Fitcham has answers for us. Are you ready for these answers, gentlemen? Mm -hmm. We are not able to value the going... We're not able to value the Airbnb concern. Lenders do not want residential yeah. loans on revenue streams. Yeah. We use income, but is restricted to long-term rentals for yeah. mortgage use reports. We know when there is STR. What's the exact ac acronym STR? Oh, God. Um, he's going to have to help us out with that. STR got, with I've Airbnb. Got, I, I've got three STR. You're looking that up, J-Dubs? I got... S three STRs in my head, and I don't want to miss. Um, but he it, says there are short, a lot of clues. Short term rental. Short term rental. Thank you, thank you, Judah. Thank you, Woody. He says there are a lot of clues, even when it's not disclosed openly. So it sounds like the appraised. Thank you, Danny O'Day. Short term rental. Um, it sounds like they're not even, they're not interested in finding out if it's Airbnb. It's in kind of this unspoken gray area. <laughs> well, so you've got that, and the, the question that you're asking, and I think I think some of the viewers and listeners may asking. And I know um, of the, the young lady, who, the young person who did the Twitter, I've forgotten her name. Molly, right? socialist Molly, dog thank mom. thank you. Molly, where's, that, where, where's the capital not going? Right? You need some money for school reconfiguration. How about you start busting balls on the Airbnbs? Ha housing affordability. That sounds like incremental tax revenue, my favorite kind of revenue right there. There you go. So, we're, we're, you know, what, what more than likely will happen is, is they tag somebody, they give them a slap on the hand, right? They go through the re the application process and then they move they move forward. Yeah, retroactively. So I don't know how you guys feel about this. The people can't be punished retroactively yeah. for running an illegal Airbnb because there's nobody in City Hall policing the Airbnbs. They can though, moving oh. forward, hit them up. Hmm. And frankly, is it the rule, Neil Williamson? Neil Williamson, um, is it the rule that you have to live in the property half the year? So it depends on the jurisdiction, right? So each jurisdiction. Pretty sure that's Charlottesville City. Uh, each jurisdiction's a little bit different, but here goes to the point of a trusted advisor. I have a client, uh, several clients actually, that want to, thinking about doing Airbnbs, and I, I pointed them to the homestay thing. I said, these are the rules that you need to, you need to follow. And we, I didn't give them any great specifics, but I said, look, you understand there's rules. These are the rules. If you can follow the rules, then at the moment, these are, these are the rules on that end. Well, I mean, it's not, to, it's not your job to police the Airbnbs. Uh, no, but it's, yeah. our job to, it's our job to educate. Sure. Yeah. Our and job you did to that. educate. It's our job to say, look, I'm not going to live here at all. I'm going to time out. You, know, you need to read these rules yeah. to, go ahead and, to go ahead and do this because we have our ethics to do, you know, like be professional, be caring, and be trustworthy. That's part of my professionalism, is to is to educate and, and yeah. to give the information. It's kind of like the guy that was upstairs who who uh, was renting out his place as an Airbnb, and yeah, that was a disaster. Everyone was like, uh, this building. "You can't." Yeah, I do had a that. Kai Bosch that it was miserable. Well, that's a violation but, of the HR, and that's the other thing. Well, about we, Keith, we changed the bylaws. But Keith is making a good point. As if you have a trusted advisor, then you have someone to advise you that you know 
that might not work, and you're, you might be better off looking for another spot. Well, you better double or at check. Least, or at least finding out before you buy the place and then find out that everybody's Ed, against you. And We are educators. That's what we do. That's what we're doing here on the show. We're educators, right? And you need to go ahead and read the rules and regulations if that's what they say. Now, if they don't disclose to you that that's what they're going to do, and after the fact, that's something else. But, but you know, if that client says, look, I'm looking for Airbnb, and here's, here's a flip side of this conversation, Right, we just ha you just went into this whole uh, discussion about I got to buy an eight hundred thousand dollar, nine hundred thousand dollar house or whatever it is, moving up. You know, maybe. Well, I don't have to. I just said that was the discussion. No, sir. I'm yeah. talking about. Uh, oh, know, the comment. The comment from Grayson. Yeah. It. So you know, part of the buyers that I'm talking to that are making this move, they're looking at this thing just to offset the expense. Right. So. How does that work, coach? <laughs> right? You know, on, on that end of it. Now, okay, good. If you're going to do that, here's the rules and regulations. This is what you have to follow. If everything works, is, goes according to Hoyle, yes, you can do it. Oh, by the way, we just found out Wood, you, Woody's ahead. not going to be able to use that as, as – the banks are going to use it as income, and Woody's not going to use it as valuation. Now, that's your cash flow is something else. Right? So explain to me and, – and, 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 and I understand a lot of people – Watch and listen. A lot of agents watch and listen. We understand that. We hear a ton of feedback post show. I'm, we I'm, do actually. I'm, I'm as positive as the next guy. We've outlined rising interest rates, which we've covered extensively on this program, right? Mm -hmm. We've outlined a two thirds reduction in sold inventory this year versus last year, two thirds reduction. We've outlined no, how... No, 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 A third reduction, not two-thirds. I'm curious of that number. We should talk about that on Friday. Okay. Um, we've outlined Airbnbs eroding housing stock and investors buying Airbnbs. We've highlighted that Charlottesville City has no Airbnb police currently in place to prevent that phenomenon from gaining momentum. We've highlighted how the market is incredibly under hoteled and as a result, these Airbnbs are gaining success, which is encouraging more to be, more units to be converted. We've highlighted that the first time home buyer can't buy a house. We've highlighted that the move up buyer, now if they'd like to move up in Albemarle County or the city of Charlottesville is probably looking at something with an eight or nine on it, which is a massive delta than what they currently own. Yeah. We've highlighted that new construction has stalled and permits aren't, work, aren't going anymore right now, or they've slowed significantly. And I'm excited about that. <laughs> We've highlighted. <laughs> I can continue if you want me to. No, not really. uh, We can talk zoning and how it's limiting the development and the rooftops from ex coming to fruition. So These are headwinds. Sure. So the what do you think a... This is very interesting for you. What do you think a... Five bedroom home currently rents for right now in Elmore County. Five bedroom like brick it. home called a little over 4,000 square feet in Elmore County. Uh, if it, I believe it has a three in front of it. 4,000 a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, 4,000 a month. So it's a math. I cannot tell you how excited I am for the market going forward. And that may be counterintuitive. And somebody might be saying, Smith, what are you drinking in your coffee? What did you smoke before you showed well, up? Well, if there's something before positive for you, if there's something positive for you on this particular topic is you're, you're going to have, um, when this year is over and going into next year, you're going to have a lot less competition. Market's going to adjust. It's, market is shifting. Oh, shift. Thank you for the, the, for the thing. Uh, oh, shift. Right? So your skill sets need to be there. You need, be, need to be professional. You need to be a pro on this stuff. You need to have a conversation. To go back to the, I'm pivoting here just quickly from my notes on your, your comments there. For the Airbnb, you know, there's not a single jurisdiction yet that allows an Airbnb without being some sort of ownership model to it, right? You either got to be there for six months or, or some jurisdictions, you have to live there permanently. Well, you know, you know the, the new phenomenon is renting houses to Airbnb them. That's yeah. the new thing that's happening. Again. I have some friends doing that. Yeah. Renting a house to They rent else. the house 
and then are converting it into an Airbnb. Yeah. So you're saying the second person, the person that's running the house is, is Airbnb. I own a house. You lease but it you, from you me. Need, you need to, you need to, and ex- you're using it as an Airbnb. But you need to expand on that market, mm-hmm. on that model, because what they do, because I know some people that do the same thing. I'm renting Judah's house, mm-hmm. and then I'm, t- I'm splitting for the weekend. I'm renting the house, I'm Airbnb in the house for the weekend. I'm still permanently living there. I'm just doing it on the weekend. I don't think that violates any rules, right? Now, if I'm renting a house, we have to be very clear about this. If I'm renting a house from Judah and I'm not taking a possession of it and I'm Airbnb-ing that's it. That's what my friends seven, are doing. Yeah, well, that's illegal. I don't think that's illegal if it's approved by the landlord. No, it's it, techni- I guess it's it, it illegal is. by it Charlottesville violated, law, it, it, but no one's policing it. Well, yeah, that, I was going to say, we determine, get We determine nobody's policing it. We yeah. determine that. But it's a, all the stay, the stay, the homestay rules I know in the jurisdictions have some sort of permanent... Yeah, Neil Williamson's posted in Albemarle County. He's the president Go. of the Free Enterprise Forum. He yeah. says you have to live in there half the year yeah. in Albemarle County. So if I... Half the year. So if your buddy or your friends are renting a house and never taking occupancy of it, right, and airbnb out on it, at some point, somebody's going to drop a dime on them. And then now what are you going to do, coach? <laughs> Neil, I saw your last comment. That was funny. Um, someone drops a dime on you, then or you, quarter, or you, 50 cents. You, you run out your lease and don't renew. Think about an Airbnb. Let's okay, say you're, okay, but, 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 you're but, renting, let's say you rent. But, that, but, but hold it, time out. Let's talk about, let's talk about this $4,000 a month house I was talking about. It's an all brick home, $4,000 a month to rent, five bedrooms. And, mm-hmm. and where is it located? It's located in, in and, East, and, Eastern and, Almaro County, okay, Eastern in the Keswick area. Got it. Okay. Let's just hypothetical scenario. This is a hypothetical scenario. And I can assure you in this particular neighborhood, the HOA bylaws prevent yeah, yeah. Airbnb. Well, so that's what I wanted to get out Which would trump the jurisdiction, that's as Neil has just said. I wanted to get out. So we, we went on this whole Airbnb conversation or the short-term rental conversation. Oh, by the way, it impacts some of the stuff I'm trying to do on housing affordability on the end of it is no because doubt. you can't do uh, auxiliary dwelling units in most jurisdictions around here unless you're permanently... Um, you know, unless it's your owner occupied, and that or grandfather clause in. Yeah, and that's where out west. If you don't mind me getting this out, that's where out west how they solved that problem um, was that you know a you needed to be either a nonprofit or you have to sign this deed restriction and 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 you got serious tax incentives and stuff like that to have uh, affordable housing. But go ahead. Say five bedroom house. Your overhead each month is four thousand dollars. Plus how, HOA. How much is the H? How much? Well, as a renter, you're not going to probably pay the HOA. How how much is a hotel room in the Charlottesville area over the weekend? Oh, four hundred bucks a night. That's, that blows my mind. Is it four hundred? Call it four hundred. Yeah. So oh. five bedrooms times four hundred. Yeah. Right. There's two thousand. You going. rent it Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It's three night rentals in this area on Airbnb. Yeah. Three nights guarantee. You have to sign up for three. So that's times three, right? You got $6,000 for one weekend. You times that by four weekends, four weekends a month, right? You just made $24,000. I know. That's six months of your rent. I know. If you do that two months, you make 48, you gross $48,000 for two months. I know. That's your rent. Everything after that is gravy. Yeah, but you're permanently living in it and you're not there for these particular weekends. Well, no, the people that I'm talking to, doing it are not they're yeah. renting well, eventually, and not living there. eventually they're going to get snagged and when they get snagged they pay out their rent their lease and and that's great but uh let's say they just started and get snagged and they have to spend 10 months that's forty thousand dollars yeah there's some risk just like any business yeah, sure, starting any business sure, sure. Um, and I don't know what other penalties they attach to that, too. I don't way. think there are any other penalties. Yeah, I, I don't. Neil would know, know this a lot more than, than I do. But It's talk, called Airbnb arbitrage. So, but I know people that do this, and some of them may or may not be my family members. And what they'll do is they'll rent the house out a couple of weekends and come live with us for the weekend and make their, help offset their mortgage payment. That's legit. They're registered. That is legit. They're re- they're registered. They they pay their 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 uh, tax, their home, their room tax, and all this stuff. And they come live with Uncle Keith for a weekend. But that or doesn't two. help the housing stock. No, 
no, no. But it helps because technically, it, if if that it particular, helps them afford, it helps them afford their house. Help but them. technically, if that answer by was the way, not, I don't charge them rent. Technically, if that solution I was not there, that, that house probably would have been included in the for sale market. Yeah. So, so the question you should be asking yourself, or I would be asking. So, if I'm spending four thousand dollars a month, what I want to know, even at five percent, right? Or if I do a fifteen-year rate at roughly four percent, how much house can I buy? If you're paying four thousand dollars a month in rent, how much house can you buy instead of paying the four thousand yeah, a month in I'd rent? I'd have to do the math. I mean, I would say you'd buy a pretty nice little house. So, so now I'm gonna say you're probably looking at like what five six hundred thousand dollar house there. It, it it depends on what the rate is and yeah, and all that credit. kind of great stuff. But I'll I'll I've took some notes. I'll have that ready because we're 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 doing this on Friday. It's just more Batman and Robin on Friday. So I'll make some notes to go ahead and. He's and, showing us the uh, Neil he? posted a link to the Airbnbs that are on the Charlottesville market. Do you know how many Airbnbs are currently listed? Oh, hundreds and hundreds. Three hundred and sixty-four. Yeah. yeah. In the Charlottesville area. Yeah. The average, I'm just doing a cursory glance, home in North Downtown, 225 a night. A bungalow in a minimum, Charlottesville, right? yeah. a bungalow in Charlottesville, 530 a night, the house, hmm. 530 a night. Um, you got a 470 a night, home in Belmont. You got, I mean, think about this. You get 470 a night, three night guarantee. Three times 470 is 1410 gross. 1410 gross, you do that, just say you do it legitimately, 26 weeks a year, that's half the year. Because you. 50% of the year. That's okay, the you're allowed to do that. You just did 40 Gs. Well, $37,000. Well, they can do it every weekend. They can do 52 weekends if they wanted to, but the, the market isn't quite there for 52 weekends. So, so I mean, because there's some things that are going on or not going on, but. But, but they're living there, Jerry, right? And that's like some, some people I know, that's what they do. They'll vacate the house for the weekend and they'll go someplace else or they go do a whatever and go, okay, I'll Airbnb the house for the weekend. So they actually go away and make money. Jamie Turner I, says this. He's repping the pep and call pepper, the mayor of Gordonsville, Jamie Turner. I have a ton of friends in Arlington who do this. They sleep on a friend's couch yeah. and rent out their room yeah. on the weekends to help offset the overhead. Yeah. You know how we talked about what the heck are people doing and why aren't they working? Oh, yeah. Are they figuring out life hacks like this to keep them from doing jobs? I mean, is this how people are generating revenue here? We're like, we're, Waffle House can't stay open because they don't have enough labor to keep the restaurant open. But Airbnb is a thriving enterprise. I was in a discussion online, and I, you know, I, I, it's not one thing, I don't, I don't think. It's a, it's a mix of things. You know, where are people going? Where are people in the, in the, job market you know we've been asking the question if they're not working how are they eating but i you know i think part of that uh part of that solution is yeah people are I, I sleeping think the on friends couches numbers are very much so underreported i don't think that those unemployment numbers that we are fed from the government are actual unemployment numbers now oh, what we see not. out on the street Right, and you go to Waffle House or Bagby's or any of these other places, and they're going, "Look, we can't hire anybody to go ahead and do that." Yeah, Bagby's legitimately will straight up tell you they can't get people. They cannot get to people. work. They cannot get no nobody in the in that specific industry. Nobody in construction can go ahead. Patty Zeller, friend at Animal Connection. Yeah, I mean, how many times she come in here? She said we need team members. Yeah. But to then, everybody, but John Kerber, but I mean, he, said every phone call. I need people. Yeah. But it goes back to, so I'll bring it around a little bit. Um, our dear friend, Mr. Fairchild from Fulvana County, Antonio Chris Fairchild. Brown, Chris Fairchild, a dear personal friend, 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 a friend of mine. You know, this, this seesaw, this, this balance, this, this, this scale, you know, they actually, with all my love for him, he actually thinks, well, we're going to bring in these huge uh, employers into Zion's Crossroads area. And I can assure you, it's not happening, and it's not going to happen, because I'm having conversations with them, because the first words out of their mouths are, great, you've got water, you've got high speed, you've got 64, where are my, where are my workers coming from, and where are they going to live? That's the first thing that they ask. 
So you can't just build that one part of the equation without building the other end of the equation. That's why live, work, play places do so well. But if they're trying to attract um, $20 an hour employees, right? That this, first of all, where are you going to find them? At B, where are you going to house them? Yeah. Right? And, 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 you know that this is a conversation I have with my dear friends on the on the elected side that that are supporting this NIMBYism, and the it was interesting um, at the at the um, naturalization ceremony. Yeah, uh, Dr. Friedman actually used the term NIMBY in his in his opening remarks in his keynote speech, which is which I thought was interesting on that end of it. So that that term is getting out there across the, and he was using it a little bit a little bit differently. Um, uh, about his reference was not necessarily in housing is is you know taking care of other people and, yeah and so doing forth. the right thing doing the right thing but uh, but you're 100 percent right so if we're all of a sudden going to start trying to grow jobs where are they going to come from but where are they going to live and they don't have the people that don't want more housing don't have an answer to that okay great um this great tech company wants to come, and I know it for a fact, wants to come into Zion's Crossroads with hundreds of high-paying jobs, but they're not going to come because there's no housing. They're actually going to go to Richmond, where there's a little bit more housing available, a little bit more friendly to go into the other side of the mountain to that. Where um, your buddy, uh, Michael Plecker, one of the best catchers the Shenandoah Valley has ever seen. There you go, buddy. Hell of a backstop, Michael Plecker. Um, also, Mr. Fontana. Michael Plecker, the Fed numbers don't include those who dropped out of the job market. He He's said. talking about the employment. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. You know, um, and, peop and people are not, you know, if you're not, I, th I think, I may be wrong, if you're not applying for um, benefits, you don't get counted. I don't know exactly right. know how that, <clears throat> did you, you know, is, is that how that works? No. Yeah. I mean, if you're not, if you're not applying for You're not going to get counted. Yeah. They don't count you. So as there's a lot of people that don't apply for benefits. Yeah. That, there are a lot of people that are just out of the system. Well, that's why we think, that's why we've been saying on the show for so long that the actual unemployment numbers are significantly more because there's people that are just chosen to be off the grid because they're either rebranding or reinventing themselves or transitioning into a new career or like being an entrepreneur or whatever the hell yeah. you want to call it. Or just living with family or friends. Yeah. So back on the housing end of things, and I kind of want to end it a little bit on a high note on the end of it. Um, and this may be just where Yona and our team is at at this point because of everybody that's on our team have years and years and years of experience on the end of it. But our tempo is upticking. Our phone calls are upticking. Our texts are upticking. Well, we're our happy emails to hear that. are upticking because people still want to make the move. They just need to know how. This, this, this path six months ago is not the same path today. That, that one needs to, to go through it. Close on this. Give us about 60 seconds on this take here. Jason Howard, could Zion's Crossroads become another short pump? No. Hundreds of apartments built above restaurants and places like Dave and Buster's. So, so the, unfortunately, the answer is maybe yes, maybe no yes. Not on the Fulvana County side. No, Louisa side, you could do that. Yeah, the Louisa side, you can do that. Um, they, they are going to get the additional water. They so got the water. Well, it's not there yet. It's going to probably be another 24, 36 months. But it's coming. But it's coming. Yeah, that's They get time. it. They understand what they can do with it um, on that end of it. But, you know, it's 100% right. They kind of get, you can't have one side of the, of the, the quarter has to be one saw, uh, be jobs. The other end of the quarter has to be housing. Where are they going? Where are the, the workers going to live? Where are the folks that are being employed by these businesses going to live? A lot of Zion's Crossroad is transitionary, right? People coming in to get to go to Checkers. I mean, I, I drove by the other day. There was a line around the Checkers um, hamburger place there in, in Zion's Crossroads because people are popping off of 64, hopping back happen back out on that end of it. This is a topic we should save for Friday. Um, if you're a company that employs a team that is you know, financially blue collar, why would you or should you or would you open up a business in the Charlottesville area? So, so it's really interesting. So we've been talking about um, first time home buyers 
and then the upper end. And we've been we've been talking about the missing middle. I think you're on to something. The the what about the jobs, right? So what where is the jobs thing? And somebody like um, well, like know, where where would the where would it, if you need. If you have a factory or a warehouse and you have to employ people to service your factory or your warehouse or your blue collar type business, industrial, where would those people live? So the question I'm asking is, is what is our business profile here? Right? Our business profile is people associated with STEM that are six figures plus in income. And? That's what this is turning into, this town, this is turning into. And the people that serve them. Yeah, but they don't live here. My, that's the point I'm trying to make is is yeah. that that you know to your point, um, and this has been systemic. This has been going on since I've been here since '87, right? That, but this missing middle again is not necessarily housing; it's it's income too, right? And this missing middle income is is kind of missing on the end of it. So you have the service entry level service uh, uh, employee, and then you have the STEM, where you have these upper ends and and this. This blue—I don't think we have a quote-unquote blue collar. We have some of it, right? The, the framers, the electricians, and stuff like that. But we don't have like a traditional blue collar like where I grew up, where you worked in a factory, your father worked in yeah. a factory, you know, or whatever it was. On that end of it, we don't have that in our jurisdiction or where we live. UVA is it, right? UVA yeah. is this, this. I think UVA is that what you're describing. A certain portion of its workforce is that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, right. Um, but we don't. My office is in the X Park, right? It used to be textile. Textile. It yeah. used to be much of Belmont was and was was all, for X. Uh, Be- yeah. folks, li- it was yeah. a company town. Right. Wasn't quote unquote a company town, but people lived in Belmont and they walked to work. Well, production has gone overseas in yeah. a lot of areas, and and wait till data science school opens, guys. The data science school is soon to open. Wait till you have the world-class data science facility in Charlottesville, and wait till you see the positives and the collateral damage that comes from that. So the, the question... It's going to be both. It's going to yeah. be positives, but it's going to be collateral damage that comes from this. So the question for Neil and, and everybody out there, are we really going to have any sizable impact on the missing middle? No. I, I, I'm, no. I'm, 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 Headwinds. I'm, I'm a positive guy. But you're not wrong. Yeah. Right? You're not wrong. It's just, it's... The, the move-up buyer now has an 800-900 threshold with rising rates. But the move-up buyer... so that They're going to stay in their house. So we've been talking... If you can go back and look at shows from four years ago or three years ago, the buyer profile are two sides of the, of the, of the, of the, of the scale. Yeah, millennials and boomers. And boomers. Yeah. And that isn't changing. The only difference is, is the millennials going to grow and the boomers... Are, are going to decrease. You right? guys are going to die. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> I mean, that's what you're saying. You're super positive. Today. I mean, that's what happens. <laughs> We're realistic people. People count on us so not let to me, beat let around me, the bush. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. I got to text my oh, text my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> What'd she say? No, no, no. She this was actually a great conversation. I think it's a great show. Yeah, yeah today was a yeah, great from show from Seattle. She's a great show. I love it. I love it, Judy. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to Judah Wickower, yeah, everyone. Man, Thank I, you. I really wanted Thank to you. celebrate you today. Wish I Judah Wickower a happy birthday in the comment section or when you see him, please. Chad Wood, welcome to the show. We love you, Chad Wood. What are you going to do today, other than work all day? His family is going to treat him well. <laughs> so where, where are you going tonight? Where, where's your? You get to pick. We where? talked about this. You know, he never. I don't think he really answered it. I didn't answer that. Yeah. I used to go to. I used to go to Flaming Walk. I don't have the Flaming Walk anymore. I think uh, last year my sisters were in town, and we ended up going to. Uh, I think, I think we'd gone out to Stanton and maybe stopped in. I think we stopped in Winsboro and found a, found a teppanyaki place there. There you go. So this year, I don't know. Uh, maybe. Might have to give uh, Continental Divide a try. Continental Divide. I was there a couple Thursdays ago. Tacos Love that are, spot. Tacos are my spirit animal. Try the spicy margarita. Mm. It comes hot. Nice. Um, I think you would enjoy it. And get the, uh, the blues, the nachos over there. I had them. They were phenomenal. Um, today's show was excellent. Yeah. I just started off wishing... Judah, happy birthday, and then we we had a we, fantastic. We got discussion. into a debate, which is fun. I Almost love that. I, love it. I actually really like it when we do that. Who doesn't? It makes for great content, great talk show. Real talk is presented by Keller Williams Alliance. The entire 
archive of shows can be found on realtalkwithkeefsmith.com. Write that URL down, realtalkwithkeefsmith.com. On Friday, we're going to do a little celebration of all our sponsors. We haven't done that in a while. Friday, we're going to highlight the partners of the program here. With How Real they Talk make with our industry better. I love it. You make the industry better. Judah, you did well today, per use. My name is Jerry Miller, Real Talk. And yes, Realty Partners, two trusted names in the game, guys. We'll see you with the I Love Seville show in 50 minutes. Take care. Excellent. Judah, for you.